A design of experiment, or DOE, is typically used to iterate a simulation study several times to evaluate the sensitivity of a parameter to the study, whether that be a model change, material alteration, or a process-related parameter. Today we're going to break down Moldextrity's expert module and see how a DOE is set up, as well as what the results of a DOE might be able to tell you. The DOE module is always going to start out by setting up an initial run. You'll want to have the model, material, and process already set for this run before getting into the design of experiment module. To access a DOE, you'll go under the new run dropdown, and you'll hit new DOE. This will bring open the DOE wizard, where you'll be able to specify the name of your DOE, the base run that you're going to be using for the DOE, the analysis sequence that each of these runs is going to follow, and then your DOE method is going to consist of how many levels you want your analysis to have. Levels indicates the number of changes for a specific control factor. And you're also going to specify how many different control factors there are in your analysis. A control factor is just a certain parameter that you want to change. So let's say filling time and melt temperature, but you can see there are plenty of other different parameters that you have access to change, things like the mesh, material, as well as a plethora of different processing parameters. The levels indicates how many, how many different values under that control factor you want to apply. So if I wanted to apply a filling time of 0.1 and a filling time of 0.2 and then a melt temperature and a, at two different states, that would be a two level analysis. If you want to increase this, you can go all the way up to five or if your different control factors are going to have a different number of levels, you can hit mixed under this dropdown for levels. The more levels you have and the more control factors you have is going to create a higher order matrix, which is going to increase the number of runs that are necessary to finish this design of experiment. Down here at the bottom, we need to assign the quality factor. The quality factor is what we're looking to evaluate, what we're looking to optimize. Under the quality factor, you'll see a, a bunch of the different results from Moldex3D. So you'll see things like a bulk temperature or a volumetric shrinkage or under warpage, for example, this one's probably one of the more popular ones is the warpage total displacement. And then once you select your quality factor, you can determine how you want that quality factor to be evaluated, whether it's globally or locally. What is the goal of this quality factor? Do we want a large total displacement or do we want a, a smaller total displacement? In this case, we want a smaller total displacement. But in some cases, you might want uh, a larger value. And in some cases, like in volumetric shrinkage, you might want a more uniform value. The weighting is going to compare the importance of this quality factor to the importance of other quality factors. So for example, if I have a filling volumetric shrinkage result, I might weight the total displacement as three times the volumetric shrinkage, and we can see that the percentages or the weightage, per, the weighting percentages are 75 to 25. Once you set the quality factors, you can hit next, and then you'll see all of the different runs that are going to be created. So we have the base run, which here in this case was run two. And then for this two by two Taguchi array, we have four runs that are created. We have run three, four, five, and six, which are just a combination of all of the different parameters that we input. And then run seven is actually going to be the optimized run. It's going to analyze the results from each of the five runs that are included in this array. So the original plus the four that's been created. And that will output the optimized filling time and optimized melt temperature. And it'll actually run that analysis and give you the results of that analysis as well. All right, so we can go ahead and create this DOE. It's going to go and create all of those runs automatically. So rather than having to go in and 
hit copy run a bunch of times, it's going to copy those runs, and it's also going to uh, rename them as the DOE runs. And then finally, run 7 here is going to be an optimized run. Okay, so now that we have our DOE set up, all we have to do is run the analysis, and then we can come back and see what the results actually look like. Let's go through the results of a case study where a customer used Mold X3D's expert module to improve their part quality. This filter head is experiencing a, an abnormal amount of warpage, and it has a weld line around a certain area, has a requirement of roundness and a requirement of flatness that needs to be maintained. The warpage results from the original simulation showed that there is a, an abnormal amount of warpage around the rim of this circular region. A roundness plot shows us the lack of roundness on this feature, as seen by this green line, which indicates the difference in radii around the circumference. For the DOE, we're using a quality factor of the total displacement with smaller the better. Then we have three control factors being melt temperature, packing time, and cooling time. And then each of those have three different levels. This creates a DOE sequence that looks something like this. A nine run analysis with the 10th run being the optimized run. And then the results of this simulation show three different response plots. The first response curve here is the impact of the melt temperature on the warpage. The second one is the impact of packing time on warpage. And the third one is the impact of cooling time on warpage across the three different levels. When comparing them to one another, you can see that the impact of the melt temperature is much more sensitive than the packing time and the cooling time respectively. This is an indication that if a change is to be made, melt temperature is going to be the most impactful change or the most sensitive change, whereas adjusting the cycle time is going to have less of an impact. You can also use the slope, whether it's a positive slope like this or a negative slope like this, to get a trend-wise idea of how that particular control factor is impacting the quality of the part. In this case, we had an increasing melt temperature from one to two to three, which shows that the highest melt temperature gives the highest warpage, the lowest melt temperature gives the lowest amount of warpage. So if we are adjusting this value, we would want to favor a lower temperature cycle than a higher temperature cycle. Conversely, if we look over to the C control factor here, we see that the lowest cooling time gives the largest amount of warpage. The higher cooling time gives a lower amount of warpage, which makes sense if you think about it. So as expected, a longer cooling time will reduce our warpage in the long run, but not necessarily as much as reducing the melt temperature. So this really just gives you a, a good idea, not only as far as what are the optimal parameters for your cycle, but also the impact of the different parameters with respect to one another. Thank you for watching this Moldex 3D Advanced Module Breakdown, and we'll see you in the next one.